God. There is none like you, Lord God, in all of the earth, God. You are great, and you are greatly to be praised, Lord God. In spite of the time that we're in, Lord, we bless you this morning, Lord. We worship you this morning, Lord. We're thankful, Lord, to be here this morning, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Fellowshipping, Lord God, in person, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We just say, oh God, have your way this morning, God. Move by your spirit, Lord God, as only you can. For we know, God, that it's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, Lord. In you, Lord, we live and we move and we have our being. And so we just ask, oh God, that you have your way, Lord. We invite you, Lord God, into your house, Lord God, where you are the leader, Lord God. We submit to your will and to your way on this morning, Lord. Be glorified, be magnified, and be lifted up, Lord, in all that we do, Lord, and in all that we say. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let us worship the Lord. Let us praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Am I on? Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord God. You are worthy, God. You are worthy, God. You are worthy, God. You are worthy, God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Come on, blessing and power. Blessing and power, glory and power, be unto the ancient of days. From every nation, from every nation, all of creation, bow before the ancient of days. Every tongue, every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee shall bow at your throne. In worship you will be exalted, O oh God, and your kingdom shall not pass away, O oh, ancient of days. Hallelujah. Come on, let's take that back to the top. Hallelujah. Blessing and honor, glory and power, be unto the ancient of days. From every nation, all of creation, bow before the ancient of days. Every tongue, every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee shall bow at your throne. My Lord, in worship you will be exalted, O God. And your kingdom shall not pass away, O ancient of days. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Let's go back to the top one more for the Holy Ghost. Blessing and honor. Blessing and honor, glory and power, be unto the ancient of days. From every nation, all of creation, bow before the ancient of days. Every tongue, every tongue in heaven and earth, shall declare your glory, every knee shall bow at your throne. In worship you will be exalted, O God, and your kingdom shall not pass away, O ancient of days. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Yay, 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 yay. Your kingdom shall reign. Your kingdom shall reign over all the earth. Sing unto the ancient of days, for none can compare to your matchless works. Sing unto the ancient Your kingdom shall reign, your kingdom shall reign over all the earth. Sing unto the ancient of days, for none can compare to your matchless works. Your kingdom shall reign, hallelujah. Your kingdom shall reign over all the earth. 
Somebody needs this this morning. Hallelujah. Somebody needs this this morning. Can't compare to your magic work. Sing it to the ancient of days. Every tongue, every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee shall bow at your throne. My Lord, you will be exalted, O God. And your kingdom shall not pass away, O angel of day. Not yet, your kingdom shall reign. Hallelujah. Your kingdom shall reign over all the earth. Sing to the ancient of day. For none can compare to your matchless work. Sing to the Your kingdom shall reign. Your kingdom shall reign over all the earth. Sing to the ancient of days. For none can compare to your matchless works. Sing to the ancient of days. Your kingdom shall reign. Your kingdom. For none can compare to your master's work. Sing to the ancient of day. Every tongue, every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee shall bow at your throne. My Lord, you will be exalted, O God. And your kingdom shall not pass away, O ancient of day. Come on, y'all. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. Oh, angel of day. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness because he's the ancient of days. I will bless the Lord. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy of honor. He's worthy of glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will love the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind. He makes a way. He keeps on making ways. He makes ways that I haven't even thought to ask him for because he's ancient of days. Did it last time. Did it this time. We'll do it the next time because he's the ancient of days. Hallelujah. We made it this far by faith. We continue, need to continue to walk by faith because he's our God. There's none like him in all of the earth. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Who shall I be afraid? Hallelujah, Lord. You are worthy. You are the ancient of days. You are the alpha. You are the omega. You are the in-between. You are the ancient of days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the ancient of days. Oh, ain't it a day? Oh, ain't it a day? Worthy, worthy, worthy of all our praise, worthy of all our honor, worthy of all glory. Oh, ain't it a day? Make a joy for noise, saints, all ye lands. Make a joy for noise unto the Lord our God. He's ain't in a day. Oh, ain't it a day? Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. I can be right here all day just blessing him because he's the ain't in a day. He continues to make ways out of no way. When we see no way, he's the ancient of days. And I bless him, I honor him, I magnify him. Mm, hallelujah. For all that he's done, for all that he's doing, and for all that he will do. You're the ancient of days, God. And we bless your name. We magnify your name. Hallelujah, Lord. He's the ancient of days. One more, one more, one more, one more. Breathe in, y'all. Breathe in. Breathe in. Breathe in. Breathe in. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, ain't in the days. Oh, God. You're worthy. 
to God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. You're worthy, God. of days hallelujah that means he was and is and is to come he always was and always will be hallelujah he's a great God nobody like him hallelujah hallelujah God we just came to bless your great name Lord hallelujah Lord the earth rejoice all the earth rejoice he wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice and trembles at his voice how great is our God sing with me how great is our God See? 
great things, right? Yes. How he parted the Red Sea, right? How he raised Jesus from the dead, how he did all those big things that made him so great. But then sometimes I think about the great things he's done for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Has God done anything great for you? Yes, Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, my Hallelujah. I just want you to take a few hey. moments and just lift oh, your God. hands. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. And think about the great things he's done for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All the things he did that nobody else could have done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The things he did that he didn't have to do, but he did it anyway. Hallelujah. 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 When I think about what God has done for me, y'all, hallelujah, I just want to testify for just a minute. Hallelujah. I just think about the great things he's done for me. Hallelujah. I can remember being a young girl. Hallelujah. And being in such a tumultuous situation in my home. And I remember feeling so hopeless, y'all. Anybody know what it feels like to be hopeless? Yes. Like, this is just it for me. This yes. is what I'm going to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I can remember thinking, you know what? Maybe I don't even need to keep living if this is what it's going to be. Hallelujah. Anybody know that feeling? Yes. Hallelujah. I know that feeling. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But one day, somebody told me about the Lord, y'all. And he came into my heart and he gave me hope. And he helped me believe that where I am right now is not where I'll always be. That one day things were going to turn around, y'all. Hallelujah. And then not only did he cause me to believe that, then he went and did it. Hallelujah. He turned things around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And all the chaos and all the pain, he healed it, y'all. Hallelujah. So I'm not hopeless anymore. And I think that's a great thing that God did because nobody else could have done that for me. Hallelujah. So when I say that he's great, I know that he's great. He's been great to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody else got that testimony? That he's been great to me. Hallelujah. Say, God, you've been great to me, God. Hallelujah. You've been great to me, God. Hallelujah. So I lift my voice to you, Lord. And I lift my hands to you, God, because you've been great to me, Lord. Hallelujah, God. We bless you in your house. Hallelujah, you're so worthy, Lord. Hallelujah, you're so worthy, Lord. Hallelujah, God. 
we bless you in this place, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm just going to encourage you to just give God all that you got today. Because that's what he did for us, y'all. He gave us his very best. Hallelujah. And he keeps on doing it every day. Hallelujah. Over and over, he keeps showing himself great to us. Hallelujah. He's worthy of our praise. He is worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. You are worthy of our praise, God. When we sing this song together, I want you to mean it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the
just lift a voice, lift up a shout of praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him a worthy praise. Hallelujah. worthy Lord God of all praise there is none like you in all of the earth hallelujah hallelujah we got a few things we have to handle business wise before I call sister Lakeisha up to minister our pre-message selection there's a couple things I want to do um, the first thing I want to do is remind you that if you are paying tithes and offerings by check or cash that the container is in the back to do that and I would encourage you to do that um, as soon as you possibly can, if not now. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. The next thing that I would like to do, this, this is Pastor Jones's last Sunday in the house of the Lord, physically speaking. Um, she's going to be retiring and moving down to Florida. She's still going to be a part of us virtually. But I would be remiss if I didn't give her the opportunity to just share a little bit with us, you know, for a moment. Amen. Is that all right, Pastor John? Amen. Amen. Let me get a mic. Any, any mic? Amen. I got the white one. Amen. I was telling Pastor Mason that I'm struggling today. I know this is my last uh, Sunday, uh, at least till I come back to visit. And um, I was struggling as I was looking at each one of you, knowing that I, I, it's going to be a while before I can hug your necks again. Um, I am so very thankful for God giving me the opportunity to be here at the Cup of Salvation. I'm so very grateful that 21 years ago, seven times three, hallelujah, he brought me here. And we have shared a lot of things over those 21 years. I'm so grateful that you stuck and stayed through the ups and the downs and the trials and the good times and the celebrations and the PSRs and the PSPs and budgets and everything that you've stuck and stayed. I thank God that you, you continue to look to the Lord. And I hope that um, in this new season of my own life that um, you'll come and visit me. Um, I'll be in Central Florida, and by the help of the Lord, you know, just continuing to do whatever it is that the Lord would have me do there. Um, I'll have a, an opportunity to be in a community, a huge community of 55 and olders, and um, do more writing and more reading um, in order to be in the place where the Lord wants, I, I believe that the Lord wants me to be in at this season. So, again, I thank you so much for allowing me the privilege of being your pastor. Thank you so much for your love. And I, I know that I'm, I'm going to still continue to be part of the Cup of Salvation, but it's, it's kind of a goodbye now, at least in that sense. So I just want to let you know I love you, 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 I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Uh, words can't express what you mean to me. I was thinking I was going to stay in North Carolina even though I have absolutely no family here because of you. But then it got a little bit too tough. Um, so I decided to go and move where I had some family. 
But um, thank you again. I love you. Please always remember that. Please always remember that you can visit me anytime. You know, if you need, you need to come to Florida and spend a, you know, a few days to, to get yourself together, come on. <laughs> All right, that's about all I have. I know you're going to continue to be in the Lord. I'm going to continue to be a part of this body until, you know, the Lord assigns me to a church there. So we'll continue to be in touch. Um, I just want to take a moment and just say thank you and I love you. Thank you so much, Pastor. So everybody point, at, everybody point at Pastor Jones as we pray for our Father and our God. We thank you for Pastor Jones. We thank you, Lord God, for all that she has given, Lord God, into this ministry, Lord God, in her past, in her present, Lord God, and even in her future, oh God. We pray, oh God, for safe travel, Lord God, as she would embark, Lord God, on retirement, Lord God, moving down towards Florida, Lord God. We pray, oh God, that you would open doors in our lives, Father, that no man can shut, and shut the doors that need to be shut, oh God, that no man can open, oh God. We pray, oh God, that you would continue, oh God, to show yourself strong, Lord God, in all of her endeavors, Lord God, because we know, oh God, that she would continue to seek after you, Lord God, with all of her heart, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, her, her life and her health and her strength. We pray, oh God, that she would prosper and be in health, oh God, even as her soul prospers, Lord God, so that she can re enjoy retirement, Lord God, with a wonderful quality of life. We plead the blood of Jesus over her and we take authority, oh God, over any and all demonic influences now in the heavens, on the earth, beneath the earth, and from any other source, oh God, that would hinder your spirit from operating in and through her. Father, we give you all glory, all honor, and all praise. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. <laughs> the other thing that I need to do, and neither one of them probably knew this was coming, but as Pastor Jones transitions, Pastor Kevin will become our new executive pastor. Come on, you can give God a praise. I want it, I want it this recorded via YouTube. Um, I talked with these pastors extensively this weekend and had a very long conversation with Pastor Tobe before we ever got here. And Pastor Tobe and I are in perfect agreement. Some might think, well, you know, because Pastor Tobe was a pastor first, it's like time and rank that she's the next one up. But after having a very, very deep conversation for a good little bit yesterday on her way to Winston-Salem, made that right? We both came to the conclusion, which is what I already knew that God said that he was the next man up, that he was the next man up. And so within the next 30 days or so, you know, I, I, I'm going to anoint that brother as the executive pastor. It's, it's a different role. It's, it's a different level. So I say that to you all to say be in prayer for him. Be in prayer for him. Because the thing is, is that some of the doors that's been closed to him in the heavens is going to open up in a way that he's never, be, never seen because he's in a new place. He's in a new dimension spiritually speaking. He's, listen, he's one breath away from leading the ministry. I ain't planning on going nowhere. I ain't, I ain't speaking nothing over my life. But, but I need you to understand the seriousness of, of where we are and the time that we're in. And, and I need somebody that's available Amen. immediately. So be in prayer for the governmental leadership 
from the pastoral to the elders to the ministers. Be in prayer for the ecclesiastical council because there's going to come change all the way through that. Amen. I'm going to be asking things of people that maybe they didn't see coming because I don't plan to do it all. I don't have to. I don't have to. Amen. side of the dirt with a measure of your life, health, and strength. Amen. It is a good morning. And the activities of your limbs, I count it a blessing. Amen. Praise our God. Let's go to Psalms, the 56th book of Psalms, and we're going to be looking at verses 1 through 13. The 56th book of Psalms, verses 1 through 13. Amen. When you're there, say amen. amen. This is the word of the Lord. Be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He fighting daily oppresseth me. Mine enemies would daily swallow me up, for they be many that fight against me. O thou most high, what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. Amen. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Amen. Every day they rest my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They gather themselves together. They hide themselves. They mark my steps when they wait for my soul. Shall they escape by iniquity? In thine anger cast down the people, O God. Thou tellest my wanderings. Put thou my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? When I cry unto thee, then shall mine enemies turn back. This I know, for God is for me. In God will I praise his word. In the Lord will I praise his word. In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid of what man can do unto me. Thy vows are upon me, O God. I will render praises unto thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death. With not, with not thou deliver my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living. And I want to speak to you from the subject today of overcoming our enemies. Amen. Overcoming our enemies. Go with me in prayer. Our Father and our God, we thank you. And we give you glory and we give you honor and we give you praise for this moment. We thank you for all, Lord God, that you have done and all that you are doing and all that you will do. We thank you, Lord God, for moving by your spirit, Lord God, this morning, Father God, as only you can, because we know that it's not by might, nor by power, but by thy spirit. For in you we live and we move, and we have our being, and we bless your name. We honor your name. 
We magnify your name. And it is Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. And amen. In this psalm, David has to overcome some fear and respect to his enemies. And one enemy in particular, and that's King Saul and the army that's pursuing David with murder on their mind. Mm -hmm. David understands what it is to be an overcomer because he had to overcome the lion and the bear that attacked or attempted to attack his flock. He had to overcome a copious amount of the of Philistine uh, warriors in his battles with them. And dare I say, he had to overcome the champion of the Philistine army, Goliath. And so he knew what it was to overcome. But his greatest enemy was one from the house of Israel, and that was King Saul. And it is this psalm that reflects some of the anxieties that David had in respect to his life as he was on the run from King Saul. Understand that all of us, no matter how long we've been in this thing, man, we, we got some things to overcome. We, we got some things to defeat. We got some things to, to get the victory over. We got some things that we need to conquer, even though we know that Christ has already conquered them, even though we know that Christ has already given us the victory, if truth be told, there are some things that we still struggle with. There are some vices that we still struggle with that we have to get the victory over in our lives, even though we know God has triumphed over them all, that God is, we're not only conquerors, but we're more than conquerors, that God has prevailed over all, but then there's some things, personally speaking, that we have to get the victory over. And David is demonstrating to us that there is some anxiety, there's some, some things on his mind, there's some things in his heart that he has to get the victory over, and he demonstrates how he overcomes. In Psalms 56, 1 through 4, it said, Be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He fighting daily oppresseth me. Mine enemies would daily swallow me up, for they be many that fight against me. O thou most high, what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. You see, for David, he seemed to have enemies on every side to the degree that every day was a fight. In fact, it was such a fight that it became oppressive because he had enemies on the road dealing with the Philistines, and then he had enemies at home dealing with King Saul and the army. And listen, when, when there's a fight on every side, when you turn to the left and there's a fight, when you turn to the right and there's a fight, when you look in front of you and there's a fight, when you look behind you and there's a fight, listen, it can become oppressive because you can't get away from the fight. When you can't seem to get away from the fight, your days become oppressive. But David said during those times, what time I am afraid, I will trust in the Lord. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. In fact, but for the mercy of God, our enemies would daily swallow us up. Because without his mercy, we have no power to withstand our enemy. Without the help of God, we, we have no power to defeat our enemy. Without the help of God, how many of you know that the enemy would swallow us up? That's why it's imperative that we trust him. That's why it's imperative that, that we keep the faith. Even when we get weary in well-doing, we need to keep the faith. All the enemy is looking for is just a toehold, y'all. He don't need a lot of space to get in, and all of a sudden you're looking at defeat. All of a sudden you're not just oppressed, but you're depressed. In fact, you're compressed. You're all types of pressed. If he just gets a, if he can just see a toehold, yeah, Amen. yeah, 
And so when it comes to, when it comes to getting the, the victory over our enemy, when it comes to overcoming and defeating our enemy in various areas of our lives, and all of us, you know what that area is. I, I, I may not know it personally, but if, but if you're on your face before God, you know what that area is, and you know that God is your strength. You know that the Lord is your light and your salvation. Whom shall you feel that the Lord is the strength? Of your life. The psalmist says, the, the psalmist goes on to say, every day they, they rest or they twist my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They gather themselves together. They hide themselves. They mark my steps when they wait for my soul. Shall they escape by iniquity? In thine anger cast down the people, O God. Thou tellest my wonderings, put thou my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? When I cry unto thee, then shall mine enemies turn back. This I know, for God is for me. David says, listen, man, his enemies are, they're unrelenting. They don't, they don't let up. They, they lie on me. They're following me in, in, in hopes that, that they set a trap for me. They don't give up. They don't quit. The enemy doesn't tire. Even if he leaves you for a season, he's, he's looking for a way to get back in. You know, he left Jesus for a season, but he was always looking for a way to get back in. Thus, we can never let our guard down. But here's the thing. God knows and cares for us. God understands our suffering. God sees every tear. He knows every pain. He sees every tear that you cry to the degree that David said he collects those tears in a bottle. Who wouldn't serve the Lord Jesus Christ? Who wouldn't serve a God like that where we can cast our cares upon him because he cares for us to the degree that he sees every tear that you cry? Yeah, he remembers our tears. So know that God is concerned about us. God cares for us. And at some point, he will bring judgment upon the enemy that comes against your soul. Thus, don't fear. Thus, don't back up. Thus, don't let your mind wander and take you to a place that is ungodly. Don't allow anxiety to get the best of you. Don't allow fear to get the best of you, but trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding and in all your ways acknowledging him and he shall direct thy path. For if God be for us, who can be against us? David said, for God is for me. How many of you believe that God is for you? How many of you know that God is for you? Listen, even in your darkest hour, God is with you. Even in your darkest hour, God is for you. Don't let the darkness that you find yourself in keep you from thinking that God doesn't care, that God doesn't see, that God doesn't know. In your darkest hour, trust the Lord. In your darkest moments, trust the Lord. David was the one who said, man, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, right? Death was stirring him in the face. He said, I would fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. Understand that when you're, when you're looking at overcoming your enemy, there, there, there are going to be some dark moments. But know that God, through God, you have the victory. Know that through God, you have already triumphed and begin to walk in that space. Begin to walk in that place and believe God. As the songwriter said during the pre-message selection, if God said it, I believe it. If God said it. It is so. And it, and it is settled. Regardless of what the enemy tries to tell us, because the enemy tries to tell us some stuff now. Regardless of those who are not rooting for our victory, regardless of what they try to tell us, we have to believe God. Amen. Period. He said in God, 10 and 11, he said in God I will praise his word. In the Lord will I praise his word. In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid 
of what man can do unto me. L listen at what David is saying. David tight kind of rehearses almost what was said in verses 1 through 4. I would not fear what flesh can do unto me. I would not fear what man can do unto me. You see, sometimes I, I have to repeat it before I can believe it. <laughs> Am I by myself? Sometimes I have to say it to myself over and over and over again before I can grab a hold to it, before I can walk in the strength and in the courage that God has for me, Pastor Jones. Sometimes I have to repeat it. And not only that, y'all, I have to repeat it out loud because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so I might be in the room just reading out loud and folk wondering what's going on. I'm strengthening my faith. I'm strengthening my faith. My wife might say, baby, you, you're so loud in there. I'm strengthening my faith. Amen. I'm rehearsing over and over and over again what the Lord said for this yeah. battle that I'm in the middle of, y'all. And, and it might look a little psychotic at times, but I'm getting to the other side of my victory. I'm walking in that triumph that God has already said that I have. I'm not only a conqueror, but I'm more than a conqueror because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have past tense overcome them because greater It's he that is in you than he that is in the world. So it's okay if you got to rehearse it. It's okay if you got to say it to yourself one time, two times, three times, four times. I remember something that, that, that minister uh, uh, Kevin Cross said yesterday. Kevin Cross said, man, I, I don't take God for granted. He says, I, I repent on a daily basis. Whether I believe I've done something or not, I go back to God and I do that thing over and over and over again so that I don't get so comfortable where I believe I just got it going on. I'm just saved like that. He said, whether I, he said, whether I, I, I believe that I've sinned or not, he dropped something on us yesterday that shifted the whole men's fellowship. In other words, it's, it's rehearsed in his spirit. But you, you don't know what you're going to get when you get together with folk in this body, man. He confirmed something that I already knew. So, yeah, God, I, I, I continue to rehearse it. Yeah, God, I'll say it over and over again if I have to. Yeah, God, I'll say it out loud. I'll read the word out loud if I need to because faith comes by hearing, and I need to hear it, and hearing by the word of God. So there's some battles that I face where I got to get loud. Amen. And so David's belief in God. David's rehearsing what God says caused him to rise to this moment to get the victory over his enemies. Verse 12 says, Thy vows are upon me, O God. I will render praises unto thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death. Will not thou deliver my feet from falling? That I may walk before God in the light of the living. What we continue to hear David say in this particular psalm is, man, I'm going to praise you. Man, I'm going to praise you. Man, I'm going to praise your word. Because praise begins to cause us to, to see this thing from a different perspective. Praise causes us to see this thing in the light of what God is doing instead of in the darkness of what Satan is doing. It gives us a different outlook. It causes us to see what God is doing in the midst of it. And, and even in your darkest hour, even in your darkest time, God is doing something in the midst of it. Who was it that was uh, 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 Fred Hammond who said, your protection, it's in your praise. Salvation, it's in your praise. Deliverance for your whole family, it's in your praise. Listen. It's in your praise, and what we see David continuing to do, though his enemy was at his left, though his enemy was at his right, though his enemy was, was on, his, on his behind, if you will, he continued to give God the praise. Catch this. Catch this. I don't care how dark it gets. I don't care how rough it gets. Trust the Lord to the degree that it's in your praise. Trust the Lord to the degree that you're going to give God the glory. You're going to give God the honor and you're going to give him the praise because he already knows 
what you're going through. And the David shows us in the text that, listen, he basically took my tears and put them in a bottle. He, he, he knows it. He's seen every tear. He sees every pain. Ah. And in this season, in this season of, of, of pandemic, we have found that there's some things that we've had to overcome. Like David, in this pandemic the last two years, we have had some enemies to overcome ourselves, the, the enemies of, of anxiety and, and fear about the, 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 the current state that we're in. Some of us have had to overcome it. We've had to overcome uncertainty about our future in reference to where we are. We've had to overcome loneliness in the midst of physical and, and social distancing, amen. We've had to overcome the spirit of lethargy. Oh, that encourages us to want to stay home after 18 months of the doors being closed instead of pressing into the house of the Lord when you have the will and the strength to go everywhere else but God's house as if we still don't need God. <laughs> as if we still don't need God. We, we got saints. Listen, I'm, I'm a very understanding and empathetic leader. And you, if, you, if you got challenges where you can't be in the house of the Lord in this season, I, I encourage you to, to watch online, right? I do. But those that, that don't, those who are in pretty good shape, amen, and, and are willing to uh, align themselves with the protocols, I'm encouraging you to come to the house of the Lord because the longer you stay at home, the more you begin to get in the spirit of lethargy. And all the enemy wants you to do is to become lethargic and just get a little lazy about the word of the Lord. You know what? Instead of getting up this morning, it's cold outside. Ain't nothing wrong with me. I'm good and healthy. If it was Monday morning, I'd be on the way to work. But because it's Sunday morning, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just turn on the, g g give me my iPad. And, and, and while I got my iPad, I'm going to cook a little bit, and I'm going to be focused on doing something else while the word of God is going forth. And, 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 and I ain't heard nothing. <laughs> Satan going to hold you accountable for that. God going to hold you accountable for that while you're sitting at home, you know, with your lethargic self looking at your phone or looking at it on your iPad or looking at it on your computer while you're busy cooking breakfast, bacon and eggs, and you ain't hearing nothing that the man or the woman of God is saying. There's going to come a time where you're going to need what was been said and you won't be able to catch it. Now, you might be able to go back and, well, let me see what Pastor Mason said two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. The enemy is on your behind right now. You needed that word back then, but you were so lethargic. You had became so sluggish. You had begotten so lazy that you don't even have the strength of the Holy Ghost on the inside of you to overcome such lethargy. It's the truth anyhow, and the devil is a lie. I know God said it. We can go anywhere and do anything that we want to do other than come to the house of the Lord as if we don't need it. And we tell ourselves, well, as long as I'm catching it online, I'm all right. The devil lives a lie. If you good and healthy and you sitting back chilling, you disobedient and you're going to have to pay for that. If you cover it by. And I know the ones that I'm covering. And I know you by the Spirit. We have had to overcome inequities in police brutality among black and brown bodies that we've had to watch on the media in, in, in the face of millions of people. We, we've had to overcome that trauma. I, I will tell you, I've had to overcome that trauma to continue to press through, to watch black and brown bodies be killed by policemen in, 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 in equitable ways. You've had to overcome bouts of COVID-19 and all that comes with it, such as parents becoming educators in the home and the home becoming the home office. And so we never leave the office because the office is at home. And the constant reports of death day after day after day 
due to, due to this COVID. We've had to be, overcome mental fatigue that comes with this whole season. You, and they ain't even calling it mental fatigue anymore. They're calling it languishing. They, they're not calling it so much depression anymore. They're just calling it languishing where, you know, you get done with your day and all you can do is just get home and just get to the couch and just, I'm just, I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm tired. I, I, I don't have a whole lot left. I, I gave it all to the man and I don't have nothing to give the man. They're calling it languishing. Yes. It's mental health. And you need, and, and you need some help. Amen. I'm just going to talk to you for a little bit. Amen. Yeah, yeah. We've had to overcome the tricks of the enemy that he's tried to play with our minds while we were isolated one from another. Yes. We've had to overcome the barrage of lies and fake news and misinformation from media sources in reference to vaccines and how to keep ourselves safe in this environment. We've had to overcome the fact that things may never be the same again, but God is still in control. It, 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 it don't matter. It don't matter what things look like, but here's the thing that we know as believers, but God is still in control. Thus, the spirit of the believer in Christ is one of overcoming. First John 5 and 4 and 5 says, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. This is why it's important that you keep the faith. This is why it's important that you don't turn back. This is why it's important that you don't throw in the towel. This is why it's important that you keep, keep your eyes on Jesus. Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind me now and reaching for those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Now, the, the, the scripture says, any man having his hand to the plow. And, and, and looking back, it's not fit. For the kingdom, so, so let me encourage you that if you don't do anything else, hold on to your faith. Amen. Jesus told Peter, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you like wheat, but I pray for you, listen, that your faith fail not. Amen. That your faith fail not. And when you are converted, strengthen your brother. You see, th th here's the thing that's important. It's important that not only that you keep the faith, but that you keep the faith for somebody else who go who's going to fall in the midst of it. I'm dealing with that with a young man now that I was talking to you all about last Sunday in, in the same room talking about somebody after 35 years that decided they're going to walk away, but I ain't giving up. Amen. What if my faith would have failed? You see, you think your faith is just about your victory. Amen. It's about the victory of people, all of the people in your sphere of influence. Yeah. It's about the victory of all of the people in your space, oftentimes that you don't even realize that's watching you. Yeah. We often tell people, keep your eyes on Jesus. Mm -hmm. But listen, if you're in Christ and Christ is in you, they're looking at you. Man, if he'd have been keeping his eyes on Jesus, well, listen, you said you was a minister or a pastor he, or, a son, or a Christian. He's he looking, he looking at Jesus in you. That's right. But we tell folk, keep your eyes on Jesus. But Paul said, yeah, our epistle, written in our heart, known and read, listen, of all men. So what Paul is saying is, listen, people going to read you. People gonna look at your faith. You, 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 you pushing, you pointing people this way. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Okay, I get that. But they looking at Jesus in you. Very often, they're not looking to the sky, looking for Jesus. They looking at people. Paul said, follow me, right? As I follow Christ. So what is he saying? Look at me while I'm looking at Christ.
So in this season, I can see why brothers and sisters are falling because they're looking at utter foolishness in a bunch of our leaders. You doggone right I said it. They looking at a bunch of foolishness. They looking at a bunch of entertainment to get them entertained instead of preaching the unadulterated word of God. Instead of opening the Bible and opening the text and going through the word of God, they're giving you performance with a bunch of light shows and calling it God. And when you need God, you can't find them nor the performance. Yeah. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Because that's the only way we're going we're gonna to overcome. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, not I am a way, a truth, and a life. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Why do we have all these other tracks to, towards Jesus? Jesus wants you to know that if he overcame, you can too. I believe he said, these things I've spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. He said, in the world you shall have tribulation. He said, but be of good cheer for I've overcome the world. Shall is a word of guarantee. Shall is a word that I promise you, baby, that if you keep living, save the unsaved, you're going to have some trouble. And you might want to go through trouble with the Lord on your side than not. Amen. Oh, I'm just talking now. I'm through preaching. We got to be standard bearers, man, in this hour. I'm tired of folk telling me Christianity is broken and the devil is a lie. Because I'm, I'm checking and looking at what, what these folk are, are preaching, where, where members are, are, are walking away. And I'm going, but my dog, I see why. They spent the first 30 minutes putting on a performance. Where is the breakdown of the word of the Lord being told anymore? And we're doing more and more and pushing more and more of the envelope of, of things trying to get people out by way of performance. We're in, now as I close, we're in um, Black History Month and I would be remiss if I didn't say something about the brothers and sisters of faith that came before us. Our matriarchs and patriarchs had to overcome the enemy as well. As we find ourselves in Black History Month, I'm reminded of the spirit of the overcomer that has lived and guided the matriarchs and the patriarchs of our faith that affords us the rights and privileges that we have today. Yeah. The struggles that they had to come through, the enemies that were on every side as they fought for equity and equality that we so enjoy today in the lives of colored folk, of African Americans. Some of those being Martin Luther King Jr., Rosa Parks, yeah. Ella Baker, yeah. Fannie Lou Hammer, yeah. and even some of the modern day folk like Congressman Lewis who said, if you're going to get in trouble, get in good trouble. Get in good trouble. Do something that makes a difference in the earth for people. Do, start a revolution. Shake this thing up. Shake up the status quo on behalf of the Lord and on behalf of, of, of helping people come out of the, the situations that they are in. And not to mention one young brother who took a knee some years ago on behalf of police brutality on black and brown bodies. Shout out to Colin Kaepernick, 
who lost it all as it pertains to his NFL career because he had the vision to see that there's something going on in the black and brown community that, that folk ain't paying attention to and that billionaire leaders ain't paying attention to. And he lost his career behind it. Yeah, yeah. See, black people are used to overcoming. Yeah, they're used to the struggle because many had to fight for us to realize the benefits that we have in America today. If I might say, the African American community had to overcome slavery. We've had to overcome the Jim Crow era. We've had to overcome inequities in hiring, housing, and education. We've had to overcome voter rights inequities and that fight still remains because you can see what state legislators are doing to voting rights of black and brown in various districts, calling it redistricts, redistricting. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that fight yet remains. And so we can't just sit back with our arms folded going, well, y'all do it, you know, and then I'll join when it's all said and done. Listen, we got to become a part of the solution. What's preached in the house of the Lord should begin to be demonstrated outside of, these, outside of these doors. And no doubt, we have simply had to fight for human rights. Because as a black man, I'm more than one third of a man. I'm just as much man as any other man, period. And very often, the challenge with us in, in, in overcoming it's seeing ourselves from the right perspective. It's valuing ourselves as God values us. Right? That's, that's, that's half the battle. That, that's the thing that, that the Israelites were dealing with when the 12 spies were sent over to, in the Canaan land. Two spies came back and said, we are well able to overcome it. Let's take it immediately. But then there were 10 who was like, listen, we grasshoppers. We grasshoppers in their sight. And we grasshoppers in our sight. <laughs> you know, not recognizing the power of God that they had in them, that they are much more than one third of a man. You are absolutely the man or the woman of God that God has called you to be. And the spirit of God lives on the inside of you. So rise up, brother. Rise up, sister, and be who God has called you to be and walk in the power of God. Yeah. So you might say, brother, Pastor Mason, how did, how did those brothers and sisters overcome? Well, I believe it was the same way that we had to do it. Our matriarchs and patriarchs before us overcame them by the blood of the Lamb Amen. and by the word of this power. And they love not their lives unto death. That's right. You see, they, they too, when the enemies of inequity and equality was all around them, yes. they too overcame by the blood of the Lamb Amen. to the degree that they were willing to put their lives, right, yes. on the line, yes. Yes. right? Yes. Yes. And yet today, we're talking about their testimony. Yes. Yes. Because of what they gave, that, that we might have the freedoms that we so enjoy today. Yes. And I would be remiss if I didn't say that our Caucasian brothers and sisters have, have definitely stepped up to help us along the way. Our, our Caucasian brothers and sisters have definitely stepped up and, and helped us in overcoming. So it's not just about the black and brown. It's about a total community coming together and allowing your voices to be heard to say, listen, no more. Yes, right. But I want you to understand that it was God orchestrating it all. That's right. That's right. No man gets the glory. As great as Martin Luther King was, Martin Luther King doesn't get the glory. It was God working through Martin Luther King that brought about this movement. And like David and the enemies all around him that oppressed him daily, 
Our forefathers saw some of the same oppression, and the answer from David's day until today is the same. And we find it in Psalms 56, 3 and 4. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Come on and stand on your feet and let's give God a praise. songwriter said we've come this far by faith leaning on the Lord trusting in his holy word he never failed me yet no, 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 can't turn around. We've come this far by faith. Come on, we've come this far. We've come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord. Trust in his holy word he never failed me yet no 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 can't turn around we've come this far by faith hallelujah no 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 can't turn around. We've come this far by faith. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the word. We thank you for the worship, the praise, the pre-message selection, the prayers. We thank you, Lord God, for those that came out today. We thank you, Lord God, for those that have watched online. We thank you, Lord God, for any contribution, Lord God, that was made to this ministry, Lord God, at all, Father God. Father, we give you all glory, all honor, and all praise for this day, Lord. And Lord, even as we would depart from this place, but never your presence, Father, we pray for safe travel. We pray, dear Lord, that we will find all things well when we get to our destination. And God, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. Fist bump somebody on your way out, amen. Fist bump somebody, amen. Thank you for visiting us at Cup of Salvation Online. As you listen, we pray that God was able to reach you, teach you, and set you free. We invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel to hear more of God's word. And if you'd like to sow into the work we're doing at Cup of Salvation, please go to cupofsalvation.org forward slash give. God bless you, and we'll see you next time.